in a market like india uh, i think one of the most critical things for a marketer to do is to be able to localize hmm. that that narrative 74 75% of the marketers said that they are already using some ai tools yeah. right as of today uh, the most significant uh, route to market for us is still in person <laughs> uh um, physical events of all shapes and sizes hello everyone welcome to another episode of conversion conundrum season 2 brought to you by economic times brand equity today we have with us mr rahul singh he is the head of marketing indian subcontinent at sap he has spent two and a half decade in marketing and continues to remain excited about b2b marketing he has seen many technology many revolution and now in the age of generative ai he finds himself as excited as he was when he joined hcl in 1995 welcome to the show rahul first of all thanks for having me starting with hcl to amd and now sap what keeps you excited about b2b marketing and did you ever think about switching to a b2c role i think that's what i want to start this conversation with when i started my career in the mid 90s i think the industry itself was very nascent but i think it was evolving really fast and i think it was a very exciting time right and and today if you ask me after having spent more than two and a half decades i don't think i'm going to trade it with anything else <laughs> because uh, for a couple of reasons right one <clears throat> of course uh, you know when you are in the b2b technology space uh, i for example had a like a ring side view mm-hmm. for all the transformational changes that have happened and and those are changes that have impacted india's trajectory for example yeah. very very significantly for example i had the opportunity to see the see the advent of internet in india in the mid 90s uh, and you know the impact that uh, that it has had then then there was this whole mobile a uh, mobile computing revolution right we moved from primarily desktops to laptops i think that was another big big change that happened uh then we had the opportunity to see the the mobile telephony um, mm. uh, revolution right and i think all of these three put together are the pillars on which you know the future of business and future of technology was laid for the country right so so you know there are so many exciting things that i've had uh, mm-hmm. an opportunity to see um you know, i cannot imagine any other industry offering you know that kind of exposure fantastic and over the years you must have also seen b2b marketing evolving so what you know in your opinion has changed or evolved in b2b marketing over the years i think one fundamental change uh, over the last decade that i've seen uh, and that was probably the most transformational for for marketing in general yeah um, and more so for b2b as well was uh, you know with the <coughs> well the increasing digital maturity of businesses who are our customers for example uh, the way they would consume hmm. marketing messages uh has fundamentally changed right which basically means uh there is a definitive shift towards uh digital routes to market yeah. uh, when when you are when you are executing or planning marketing Correct. programs so that i think is the most significant and that's not just for india i think that's true for the world but talking of india specifically i think india is unique in many ways right yeah. even in the b2b space i think the the diversity that we have uh, in terms of uh, the variety of companies right in terms of maturity of their uh, you know uh, digital status what it requires basically is to you know while while we are a global company yeah. and you have uh, well content and messaging actually being centralized across the world but then in a market like india uh i think one of the most critical things for a marketer to do is to be able to localize hmm. that that narrative for the for the market right and Correct. just to give you an instance let's say if you have a global marketing program which is specifically targeted at the automotive industry yeah now the the status of uh of the automotive industry in india may be fundamentally different from what's happening in europe or the us Correct. right so your story Uh, and your messaging and your narrative uh typically would need to be tailored for 
uh, for India market. Yeah. And your campaigns would have to be rooted in the, you know, in the in compelling events that are happening in this market. Mm. Uh, so there is no one size fits all. Okay. So I think you mentioned about the AI revolution, and as a marketer, not essentially just in your organization or in your industry. What about generative AI or AI actually, you know, excites you the most? And I think uh, like for so many other industries and functions, mm. uh, AI is going to be transformational for marketing as well. And we are already seeing that happening, right? Correct. I mean, there was a survey that I came across where, uh, you know, marketers, almost 74, 75% of the marketers said that they are already using some AI tools, yeah. right? To, uh, of course, the degree of maturity uh, of the usage may vary from uh, you know geography to geography or industry to industry mm. but clearly you are already seeing that adoption happening but I think the transformative change that will bring about is the fact that you know the ability to actually process uh, humongous amounts of data mm. and provide in insights I think is just central to marketing right yeah. it, um, and uh, the tools would allow you to kind of predict customer behavior to be able to to plan for your uh, campaigns in a fundamentally different way right because the insights available to you hmm. uh, would be unprecedented our show's name is conversion conundrums and we to convert you need to generate the demand so i want to understand from you what is you know your strategy of demand generation and do you have your favorite channels uh, being in the b2b tech space right uh, or tech marketing space i think one of the the single biggest kpis is demand generation yeah. for us and um, and the first rule there in my in my book is that your marketing plan has to be aligned to a business plan right what that essentially means that a business plan would have certain pockets of significant opportunity that you identify mm. and then you figure out sales and business plays that would help you address that that pocket of opportunity and from each of those plays um, you will have a, a set of marketing activities that will kind of execute or help execute that play right mm. so that is essentially the structure that we follow uh, to create demand, okay, yeah. which is very, very tightly aligned to what are the business goals that that a specific market or a market unit has, right? Mm -hmm. And the second part of your question, yeah, how you acquire the leads uh, in your favorite After channel. having said all of that, all of the stuff that I've said about, you know, this whole transition to digital, which has been happening over the past mm -hmm. many years, and all the tools and techniques that we have uh, in the form of, uh, you know, uh, new technologies yeah. like AI, as of today, uh, the most significant uh, route to market for us is still in-person <laughs> um, physical events of all shapes and sizes. Of course, there may be, uh, you know, could be a high touch one-to-one uh, -one approach uh, uh, wherever you see yeah. a significant opportunity. Like I said, the favorite channel and not just because, uh, because it is my personal choice, hmm. uh, uh, the, the sheer numbers that we see, a vast majority of our new uh, demand that we see is still created from face-to-face, -face wow. in-person uh, events. You know, SAP caters to a variety of customers and provides a variety of solutions also for different kind of enterprises. As a multi-product organization, what are the challenges that you face when it comes to marketing or leading the marketing function of this multi-service product? Or, you know? Yeah, so I, I think over the last maybe a decade or so we've, we've evolved as a company right i mean from being uh, a dominant player in the erp space uh, today our portfolio uh, has uh, has solutions for almost all lines of businesses right mm -hmm. what the, the challenge that it has thrown for us is that you know from um, from a, a buying center like the office of the CIO, for example, or the office, the IT office in, a, in an organization. Now you have uh, a completely different set of buying centers besides, of course, the CIO, of course, right? Yeah. Which means if you are, uh, if you look at our portfolio, we will have solutions for, for uh, human capital management. Correct. We will have solutions for, for spend management, for example. You will have solutions for uh, customer experience, etc. Now, for each of these solution areas, uh, while 
well, they may be a set of influencers, but you, you know, the business case for for uh, for software is actually uh, kind of led by the the persona, the the buying center is typically the head of that function, right? Okay. Uh, so the challenge for us as marketers is now you have these uh, diverse set of personas hmm. or buying centers, um, and and I think being able to address um, uh, the way they look at your brand, for yeah. example, and also you know the way they participate in the customer journey may be different for each of these personas, right? Exactly. So that I think is the single biggest challenge wow. uh, that we face at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. In your recent interview, you said that effective leadership is about empowering your team to take ownership and drive initiatives. The, what I want to know from you, Rahul, is how do you create that environment as a leader to ensure that your team is able to take their in, in ownership and initiative? Very interesting question. Um, and I'm, I'm really... You know, I don't know if you if you saw this. There was this little video, which Barack Obama, you know, where he mentions, uh, you know, the qualities that that he would expect in a yeah. in a young professional, right? Where he says, the ability to get things done Correct. is the single biggest skill, right? Um, that he expects uh, from younger people, uh, and that I think. You know, when people have, everybody brings that ability to execute. Mm. And my philosophy is that when you hire the best people from the industry uh, who bring in the competency and the experience, yeah. right? Um, it is very important that you allow them to express uh, themselves because, you know, the best solutions come out from our, you know, diversity of approach and diversity of thinking. Correct. And, and I think that really is the way I operate or at least try to operate uh, where every team member brings in that that special unique superpower uh, to the table. Fantastic. You know, we are the last part of this segment and, and when I was researching about you, I found that you have been awarded the most ever admired marketer by SAP for various regions and not once but many times over the over the course of the time. What I want to understand from you and much for you know, as much as it is for me, also for our viewers, what is it that a young marketer entering the tech interface or any interface, the marketing function, what are the qualities or the best practices they must be having? I think the first skill that anybody needs to have is, like I said, the ability to, to execute whatever they have mm. at hand to the best of their ability, I think. And, and very related to that is something that I call the say-do ratio, right? Yeah. Which means if you... If you say I'm going to, one, you raise your hand mm. uh, um, to solve a problem and not just be a, an articulator yeah. of, of problems, right? And the second is the say-do ratio, which means you said I'm going to deliver this, uh, uh, you need to deliver it, okay? Yeah. Uh, I think everybody, it doesn't matter whether you're a marketer or in any other function, I think that's the single biggest skill. The second skill I would say is is storytelling. Okay, irrespective of all the technology coming in, I think the the core uh, of marketing, in my opinion, is to take a value proposition and create a compelling na narrative around it. Yeah, uh, and be able to deliver it across mediums, right? And the last one uh, is a very strong business orientation. Yeah, and a very strong data orientation right because data is where the magic lies and without business orientation especially business when i say business orientation means you're very tightly aligned to the business plan and your business stakeholders um, because in b2b marketing that's a very very critical uh, requirement fantastic great thank you very much for your time and it was it was amazing having this conversation with you it was rahul singh you know, from say-do ratio to actually climbing the steps and not essentially the elevators. Amazing insights we got from this veteran marketer today. Stay tuned with us for more in this series, Conversion Conundrums, brought to you by Economic Times Brand Equity.